Hi, my name's Mark Gatter. I'm an Adobe certified ACE and ACI, and I've got a bunch of books out. I'm also an author, and I decided to record some online videos recently. I did a whole course on InDesign and Intro, followed by InDesign Advanced. Then I did Color Theory, and then I did another one on InDesign called InDesign Interactive. I've got a company name. It's Tunnel Vision Limited, and here comes the logo. And this is the website, tunnelvisionltd.co.uk. And if you go there, you'll find all kinds of stuff. And this is my new course, Premiere Pro. And I hope you like it. And if you do, tell me and tell me what you'd like to see next. Handheld footage is notoriously shaky because it usually involves somebody walking along while they're holding a camera. Here we've got a gravel path, which makes it even more difficult so before I play it, I'm going to mute the audio so we don't get totally distracted, and now I'll play it. And there's a little bit of a shake there at the beginning. It's hard to zoom in and keep everything steady. And the camera's drifting around quite a bit, so not great. Now the second one, I'm going to apply a warp stabilizer effect to it. So I'll click on Effects, and then here in the search field, I'll start to type the word warp, and look at that, it found it straight away. It's a very good search engine. And I'll drag that and drop it right onto the clip. Now the yellow band above it instantly goes red, because now I've added a complication. Video drives the system hard enough. You throw in an effect on top of that, and you're driving it really hard. And so this red line is telling me it is going to drop frames during playback. Now, if I rendered it for output, it wouldn't drop any frames for the render, but in playback, it will. Now, if I want to fix that, I can. I'll put the playhead just before the red line and press the letter I, and then put the playhead just after the end of the red line and press the letter O, and that designates an in to out point. Now, if I go up to the sequence menu, I could then say render effects into out, but look, there's the shortcut. And all I've got to do is press Enter, and it renders. And then it'll play through it to do an analysis. See, the line's gone green now, but now it's analyzing things in the background. If I go to Effect Controls and scroll down to Warp Stabilizer, you can see there's a count of how it's doing. Now it's done that. Let's just try that again and see if it worked. Now it's stabilizing. Okay, it's happy. So now when we play it back through, but first I'll get rid of the in to out point, so I'll right click here and say clear in and out, and then I'll put the playhead there again and just play it. And the shake at the beginning is gone. The zoom is much smoother. There's still going to be camera drift. You know, you can't not point up into the sky a little bit. But it's made it a whole lot more stable. So there's the difference. Warp Stabilizer is incredibly good. It's worth doing that to clips. You can only do them, unfortunately, one at a time and then outputting the clip as an MP4, and then you can use it in your sequence, and it'll be a whole lot smoother than it was before. Well, that's it, and I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, please don't forget, go visit tunnelvisionltd.co.uk. You'll find links to all my other videos. You'll find blogs, free information, all kinds of good stuff. And you can contact me through the site. Thanks for stopping by.